Hi guys, and welcome to the Sunderland vs Shrewsbury match preview. So Sunderland do take on Shrewsbury at the Sage Malai on Friday, and it's uh, it's an absolutely massive one. I think it's for the fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe even eighth time in a row. I'm going to start by saying it's another cup final, and of course it is. And at the moment in the top six, we are actually the most informed team amongst the top six. You know, Rotherham lost last night, which... Uh, uh, which was a surprise, but I'll say surprise, they're, they're dropping off. Wigan, I believe they drew. I mean, if you actually have a look at the league table now, and I saw a lot of people on Twitter doing it as well, almost you know counting on the, the hands and the fingers to see how many points we need to get into the top two and getting a bit ahead of ourselves. I mean, it's not impossible, but uh, you know, if we win the remainder of our games and Rotherham keep falling away as they are, you know, if Wigan maybe drop points, well, Wigan are just too far ahead at this point, but there is still a chance, you know, because there's other teams who are on the top six that still have to play each other. So there is a small chance, a tiny, tiny chance, albeit, but still, reason to get excited when you see teams above us dropping points and we're coming into a bit of form, which never usually happens, does it? The last few seasons, it's always been the last sort of eight or nine games where we've just absolutely collapsed and absolutely bottled it. But at the minute, we seem to be coming into the final five games or so where we're coming into a bit of form, we're scraping results, even though we know we might not be playing the best, we're scraping results. But, uh, but yeah, so if we keep winning, you never know. But anyway, getting into the preview, of course, we're taking on Shrewsbury, who are not going to be a pushover. They're not going to be an easy team to beat at all. They're never easy to beat. It's never easy. You know, last time we played them, I think we were 1-0 up. Um, they had a, a man down by half-time, and we ended up drawing one all. You know, so they're a resilient side, granted, and albeit we were shite that day and were terrible. But they defended for their lives when they had to, and they scored when they had to as well, and they got themselves a point. So, it isn't going to be an easy game. If you look at their last five games as well, they've picked up some absolutely cracking results. I think, uh, yeah, last time out they drew with uh, Ipswich. Ipswich were a goal up. Then uh, Ipswich went down to 10 men with 15 minutes to go. Then they got themselves a decent equaliser. Before that, they did lose away from home against MK Dons 2-0. But before that, you know, they beat, Shrew sorry, they beat Lincoln by a goal to nil. They beat Rotherham, battered Rotherham by three goals to nil away from home. And before that, they beat Morecambe by five goals to nil. So, you know, they're not a bad side at all. And of course, they have former Sunderland man Tom Flanagan in that uh, in that defensive line of Shrewsbury's. And we know that, you know, over the first couple of years, maybe Flanagan was with us. I gave him a lot of stick. I thought he was he was poor. He was all over the place. We get your legs. A lot of people called him. But this season with us, you know, the first half of the season before he left, he had arguably his best season and was one of our best players. He was very, very consistent. Then obviously he left in uh, in January, which I think it stumped a lot of people. It definitely stumped me. And we replaced him with Danny Bart, who I think's had a couple of games and then was injured for a, a period, for a, a lengthy stint. And he's come back and played one game, Danny Bart. I think, uh, I think well, not last time out, um, the one before. And he was actually decent. So I was surprised he didn't start against... Uh, uh, against Oxford the other day but um, we will of course see my preferred 11 for this game and you'll see that Danny Bart is in it but um, but yes yeah, so it isn't going to be an easy game at all but before we do go into my preferred 11 and all that kind of stuff if you can hit the like button for me it's always massively massively appreciated and also thank you all so much for joining the stream last weekend yet again we've had such a laugh we really did you know I had a couple of beers you lot were having banter with me in the chat and we have such a laugh and of course it was scenes Yet again, at the time, you know, at the minute, for those of you who don't know, we have this bit of banter where if we haven't scored in X amount of time, which has been a while, I'll change my Sunderland shirt and then we hope it gives us luck. And then in the latter stage of the game, we we're joking with a chat. I threw on all the shirts. I had about five or six shirts on. I couldn't breathe. And then we scored. It was absolute scenes. It was class. Um, but yeah, so we have, we have such a laugh. But also, question of the day. Question of the day. So I've asked you a couple of things already with these questions of the day. I've asked you, you know, where perhaps you guys are from, your favourite player that didn't play for your club. Now I'm going to go for your favourite manager of all time for the club that you do support. I say the club you do support because it's not all Sunderland fans watching this. So uh, what is your favourite or who was your favourite manager? Mine was Peter Reid. He was the first manager around when, when I first started supporting Sunderland. And he was almost like a father figure to me because he was like a mainstay. He was a part of the furniture. And I was absolutely heartbroken when he did. Leave. I think after Peter Reid, it's probably the closest I've got in terms of closeness to that was Sam Allardyce. And we know how things went after he left. So, uh, yeah, for me, it would be Peter Reid, my favourite Sunderland manager of all time. So, you guys let me know in the comments down below who was your favourite manager of all time that, of course, supported the club. Sorry, supported who worked for the club that you support. But getting into my Sunderland at preferred 11 for the game on Friday. Oh, and a heads up, by the way. I will be live streaming the game on Friday. Uh, for me, I completely forgot that we're playing on Friday, not Saturday. I forgot it was Easter weekend. I'm working on Saturday, so I was thinking, oh shit, I can't, um, I can't live stream it. 
but then I found out that I'm uh, I'm coming off the back of a night shift on Friday, so I will be able to uh, stream the game. So for those of you guys who want to join me, I will be live streaming the the Sunderland first Shrewsbury game. Uh, it should be loads and loads of fun. But anyway, preferred eleven. So I've changed it because the three at the back I despise. I don't believe we have the players to play the three at the back. We got away with it at the weekend. Sirkin in that back three, he was getting cut out time and time again. He had acres of space over on Sirkin's side. Sirkin, for me, I really like him. In a back four, as a straight-up left back or left wing back, I think he's decent. But in a back three, he's anchored back and his position, positional sorry, his positional awareness at times is very, very questionable. And they were having acres of space on his side. And we could have easily gone three, four, five at, at times, you know, with the amount of space and the, the chances they should have put away, at least created a bit more with the amount of space that they were getting. And we're very fortunate that Pato was an absolute world-class form against Oxford. Um, but yeah, in the back, we looked so, so shaky. Shrewsbury will be a team that I believe they will play counter-attacking football. They can really get in your face. And it is very difficult, particularly at the stadium like we've seen it, you know, for ages now, where teams come to the stadium like they sit back, pack, everyone behind the ball. But I want that four at the back. And usually it's a bit easier if you have the three at the back because then we can push everyone forward and try and get in behind and try and sort of dissect and, and try and work our way through the, you know, the, the defensive team that are just sat back and, and got everyone behind the ball, as I say. But I just feel we need that bit of solidity at the back and we can't afford to have such a lack of numbers at the back when you're going to play a counter-attack inside like Shrewsbury and they will be frigging dangerous in the counter-attack. So for me, I will go for a four at the back. But we'll see anyway. I'll explain my uh, preferred 11 in a moment. You might uh, have a couple of eyebrows raises. Not that they have any more eyebrows than a couple. But you know what I mean. <laughs> there might be a, a few uh, eyebrows raised. I can't talk. I'm chatting shit. Here is my preferred starting 11. So I've gone for the sort of 4-2-3-1, which can be adapted. But I've gone for Pato and goal, Sirkin, Bar and right. And, uh, and Winchester as well across a back four, like I say, I give Sirkin the uh, uh, the sort of freedom to move up and down that left wing. Same with Winchester. You've got Neil and Evans in there. Now you might be thinking, Jesus Christ, you finally picked Evans, but he did score against Oxford. He wasn't absolute garbage, and I think it'd be a bit too harsh to leave him out there. I put Dan Neil next to him, which again you might be surprised. Why aren't I putting Matete? I haven't put Matete because I believe that it was one of the most overrated performance from Matete. I'm not digging him out. I think he's a good player, but just hear me out. Against Oxford, and I said it on the live stream time and time again, I genuinely believe he was atrocious against um, against Oxford. He would kept winning the ball, which is fair enough. He kept nicking the ball off him, intercepting, and then he would immediately lose it. And he did that a good five, six, seven times against Oxford. He kept winning it back and thought, okay, that's class. That's what Matei does. Now, moving the ball, his pass would go straight to an Oxford man or he would immediately just run into trouble and lose the ball and not release it in time. And he did that so many times. His only sort of well-rounded 100% contribution was towards the goal and the build-up to the goal that we scored to make it 2-1. That was the only time where it pretty much a pass didn't go straight to an Oxford man. And apart from that, like I say, he was very, very poor. And then I was seeing on social media, everyone was saying that it was amazing and he should be up for man of the match. When I generally think he was very poor. Like I say, it's all well and good winning those second balls and getting a footy and that's brilliant. But then you need to move it on and you need to progress with us instead of just immediately giving it away. And he did it so many times. So for me, I bring Dan Neal in there at home, you know, behind the home crowd. You got Evans in there who can maybe sit just in front of the back four and just give Dan Neal that freedom to just get involved with the attack because we need to get as many bodies forward against Shrewsbury, who I do think will just sit back. Now, the three I put behind Stewart, I put Broadhead, Pritchard and Embleton. Pritchard apparently will be fit or may be fit for this game. And if Pritchard is fit, Pritchard starts for me. Same with Broadhead. Embleton, you know, last two games he's come on, you know, the first day he come on on his um, birthday, he got himself an assist. And then he scored again at the weekend. So you just can't, you can't leave him on the bench again. You know, to have someone on the bench, keep on coming on and contributing. I just think it'd be highly unfair not to play him. And he does have that quality. When I mean, you've got a team that are sat back for the majority, which they may do, they might not do. I could be wrong. You know, Shrewsbury, they could flip it up a little bit. They could turn it around. But with someone who has the deliveries of Embleton and has that creativity of Elliot Embleton, uh, and, and he does have a strike in him as well. I just think you need to use him. Patrick Roberts didn't really contribute too much at the weekend either. And of course, like I say, you've got Stewart up top there as well. You could change the formation with Broadhead alongside. Stewart, maybe Pritchard can uh, move over to the left. Embleton on the right, which gives you a little bit of a, a weakness in terms of a lack of pace. But that is probably what I would go with. And I think by half-time, if we haven't got him behind him, then I would switch it up and bring you know Clark uh, and Roberts on just for that direct sort of pace. Um, but as of right now, that's probably what I would go with. Uh, of course, in the comments, let me know what you would go with. Now, for my score 
Predictions are oh, this is going to be a difficult one. I know it is going to be a difficult one, but I do think it is going to be one where we're not going to score in the first half, and I think it's going to be yes another late show. I think it's going to be three late shows in a row. Well, several late shows in a row, isn't it really? But I do think we're going to win by two goals to nil. We'll get ourselves a clean sheet at the sole, and I do think it is going to be a couple of late goals, maybe one in the sort of like 82nd, 83rd minute, then one in the 90th minute as well. I'm going to give one to Ross Stewart, and I'm going to give another one to Elliot Embleton as well. So that is what I'm going to go with. That is my preview. If you have enjoyed, let me know in the comments down below, and of course, subscribe as well. Please subscribe. We're so, so close to hitting 14,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. And of course, a reminder, I will be live streaming on Friday Probably about 15 minutes before kickoff. Get everyone in. I won't be drinking because I absolutely smashed it at the weekend. <laughs> After that result, I absolutely smashed it. Went out in Blackpool. I ended up in bloody Poulton. And uh, I was a state. But there we go. That's what happens when Sunderland win. I drink. Uh, <laughs> but yes, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, take care and stay jamming.